Welcome, Trash Clan followers, to the podcast. You know what time it is. Trash bag on the mic. Honorary Mr. Owen 2 trash bag himself. That was the first time for everything, one might say. A wise man said that things things that you don't expect to happen will happen during the unexpected. Fantasy football, the only thing consistent is inconsistency. We are back. The podcast Welcome to station number 120.80.9 in honor of the lobotomization of one Mr. Gary Frazier at the hands of Zachary Gold. We're going to go through our normal things today. If these people will go, I will be home before 2030! Look how slow I'm going. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Would you watch this? Look at this. Look at this. It was slower than the count in the 2020 election. Rigged. Okay. I'm on, oh, I can't even drive like this. Okay, boom. Typical show. Nothing new to see here. Um, Once I I weasel in here, I'm going to do this right here. Thank you for your undying ineptitude, sir. Um, Okay, we're going to go through the storylines. High man, low man. We're going to go, we're going to obviously name that song. Most pathetic teams. Looking forward to next week, Amber Alerts, 9-11 level postal, Fathers. The usual. Um, first storyline that we want to jump into. Injuries are in full force to top players. Uh, I was talking to a guy at work, and uh, he he was like, who's the best first-round pick right now? And, you know, I didn't know how to answer that question. This is a standard redraft league, by the way, not super flex where you have to take a quarterback and, like, 100 quarterbacks in the top five. Um, this is standard redraft. So you've got dudes like – so you got CMC <laughs> – uh, you've got Brees Hall. He's okay. He's losing touches to the backup, who's a stud. Like, you've got to be kidding me. Bijan, uh, Bijan's not terrible. C.D. Lamb, decent. Justin Jefferson, he's doing good, coming out hurt. Not sure how long Sam Darnold will be able to sustain this. Uh, you've got um, A.J. Brown, hurt. Puka, hurt. Tyreek Hill, Tua, hurt. Equals ineptitude. He's probably not going to break 10 until Tua gets back, if Tua gets back whatsoever. <laughs> Um, I'm trying to think. That was one more. Um, uh, I can't remember the other name, but like that. What I'm telling you is the the injuries are be- just riddled throughout the top ten picks right now. I mean, if I had to say it, and this is just not being biased, I, I would probably say Bijan was the safest first round pick at this point. Looking back, maybe Lamb, but I think Bijan's got more points. I guess one of those two are probably the safest too at this point. Lamb uh, Hall's doing good, but it makes you wonder if they're going to start, you know, eating into the eating into the workload. But I mean, definitely Hall, Bijan, or C.D. Lamb is the is the play for the uh, guys that just haven't been haven't screwed us over with our first round pick. So we're just kind of getting um, getting cooked there. It kind of leaves me with the question: you know, why why even invest? What's the point of investing with no return? Call no Bidenomics on not getting a return on any investment. Next storyline. I'm basically a surrogate at this point for this league. I have, um, I think the next closest to me is within like 30 points. So I've just been dropped loads off inside of. I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm taking FedEx, uh, UPS, USPS, postal packages, steady pace right now. It's just not even fun. Uh, I'm not. I'm, my, my team's scoring. <laughs> I just can't prevent my – I guess my defense is trashed. I don't know. I can't prevent people from lobotomizing me. So not really sure how to address that. I mean, you know, you do your part, uh, but, you know, it, it, you, you have to what, – what's unbecoming of what has been? You know, I, I don't know what more I can do outside of score. <laughs> uh, the injury bug is feasting on everything cheese and galt. Call no Lizzo on eating and feasting on everything. It has just cooked them. We're talking about AJ Brown. We're talking about Debo. We're talking about Pacheco. We're talking about CMC. We're talking about four top 20 players here. Players, period. Um, so, yeah. 
the that's the that's the third storyline. Fourth, Chiefs continue to be coddled by the officials. I've seen less flags at the Olympic Games. I'm serious. It's ridiculous. Uh, I mean, I don't know how much better defense you can play the other day. It's outlandish, the things that I'm seeing. But these Chiefs, they should be 0-2. Uh, but the officials, they can't have that happen. Um, and by the way, a few things. Uh, Cheese, uh, Cheese wanted me to tell you Clay with a lowercase c that uh, he wanted me to tell you scoreboard. And uh, Scoggins wanted me to tell you guys uh, uh, size of male genitalia, if one will. Um, and yeah, uh, in uh, storyline number five, we have six of these, um, typical booty cheek owners are dog walking traditional league champions, right? So we've got Galt and I who aren't hitting our typical targets, call no Democrats on not hitting your target. And, the, and then, I mean, we're, we're just hanging on by a thread and then you've got typical dumpster ju juice booty cheeks, uh, you know, grody owners such as Skeet and Evan you know, dog walking the league. It's just, it's honestly, my. I feel like we might be living in some kind of like portal, uh, call no book on the portal. Um, if you know, you know. If you don't, wage. <laughs> um, uh, Clay, uh, unsafety. Oh my good lord. Uh, lack of safety at this moment in time, Clay. Um, and let's see, one more storyline. Yeah, uh, these QBs cannot do anything without a lot of weapons and a lot of ammunition. Call no diddy on having a lot of weapons and a lot of ammunition. He, I mean, you've got dudes like Kirk Cousins who can't do anything, and he's got toys galore. Caleb Williams quite literally has a plethora of offensive toys, can't do anything with them. C.J. Stroud has a lot of toys. He's done decent, but based on the amount of toys he has, uh, you know, you would think that he would be putting forth uh, a little bit more. Um, but, yeah, um, that's about it. But we'll jump into uh, some of our uh, typical segments. Uh, and starting out with a uh, with a crowd favorite. Yeah, does anybody got eyes on Kyle Pitts? Does anybody have eyes on Sam Laporta and Travis Kelsey? Last seen being relevant on a football field. I think those guys, I think the three of them combined for less than five! points total so that's just humiliating just debilitating if you're an owner debilitating uh just it, it, the fantasy football player in general it's just disgusting um and yeah I and mean, it's just it's sickening it's like i said they, they scored less less than five i mean that's an alarmingly low number uh call no cj stroud's wonderlick score on being an alarmingly low number yeah anyway High man and low man. Skeet, 140. I, I tell you what, Skeet, uh, his, he doesn't have a quarterback at all. Uh, but, I mean, he kind of had, outside of that, he kind of had the full package this week. Call no Michelle Obama on having the full package. He he, he got 140 and, uh, you know, kind of took Calder out back for a good old lashing. He, uh, very cordial. I, I don't know the last time Calder beat Skeet in anything, quite frankly, except you know, not being good. <laughs> uh, and then we've got, uh, I've got an honorable mention for the low man because it was, I, I don't feel like it should be left undone. I want to be unburdened by what has been. But right now, Gary, this is my anthem to you. Gary got low, man, you got real low. Never, never be the worst. Yeah! Thank you, Gary, for being so incredibly bad, so consistently. And call and uh, Scoggins, don't think I let you out, buddy. You are just barely, uh, you barely uh, eclipsed Gary at 85.9. Gary got 85. Uh, these are just extremely low numbers. Call no Biden approval ratings <laughs> on being an extremely low number. Moving on. Family court. This kind of goes back to Gary. You. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about, Matthew Gall. 
you have been awarded from the court a third child, and his name is Michael Gary Frazier. Uh, you uh, uh, you have deemed uh, uh, you have proved a capable father. You have been named the biological father of one Mr. Gary Goforth. Gary Goforth. <laughs> Two guys that just can't beat me in anything. I guess I get their names mixed up. <laughs> Oh wow, they're both they're just putrid. Um, yeah, thank you, Galt, for uh, taking on another person from our adoption center and uh, helping uh, lower the uh, the uh, foster home population. Um, Nine eleven level post of Kyler Murray, twenty eight points, a twenty eight piece nugget. Uh, James Phil Cook also got a twenty eight piece nugget. A Chan again got a twenty eight piece nugget, capsulated by Alvin Kamara doing something he will never do again. He does this like once every five years. He busts off a forty burger. I mean, he, the man, my man turned back the clock. Uh, he just called call Dolly Parton on wanting to turn back the clock. He just did something that I doubt I'll see again. But, hey, he got his 43 points. It was quite literally almost half of Calder's. But it was not enough to beat Skeet's full package. Uh, hashtag Michelle Obama. Um, I mean, these guys just had to – They, I mean, these guys just went crazy. I mean, they just had a party on the field. Uh, Calder Diddy <laughs> on having crazy parties on the field. Um it, but, you know, we'll see if these guys can sustain it. Um, and, yeah, I mean, now, and good luck getting Galvin Kamara from Calder. I mean, he's it's just he, – he, he'll be dubbed his prize all season. World keeps on spinning. Most pathetic team performers is – just, just absolute complete jokes. And I would like to play a, a, a commemorative song just to let – just so we can remember of how pathetic these teams actually are. In the background, it will be playing in the background so we do not forget. The Carolina Panthers. I'm not going to sit here and allow the Carolina Panthers to par parade a found on an NFL field in the NFL standings despite the fact how low they are in it. They should be demoted to the Pac-12 expeditiously. The Panthers just getting ran clean over. All no middle class on getting ran clean over. It's just not fun. A 26-3 from the Chargers, who also are 2-0. Not a good football team. They played the Broncos and the Panthers. I, I just look God, God be with them when they play a real team. That team will do unspeakable acts of terrorism on them. Moving on to the Baltimore Ravens. I'm not sure what I expect. This is not exactly what I expected here. Um, I, you know, I, open and shut case. Maybe we're just not that good. The gasp. <laughs> Pull your jaw up off the floor. Maybe we're just not that good. Call no Joel Embiid on not being that good. The Rams. The Rams got absolutely lobotomized. 41 to 10. The Rams got rammed. <laughs> Call no Jenny McCarthy. The, I mean, the, them, them, them cats, you know, they're close enough to Hollywood. They might should have hit up Diddy for one of them lube bottles before they got a, before they played the, uh, the Cardinals because, Lord have mercy. I mean, steady pace. They got drug taking shot after shot it was just extremely disgusting um it's very gross the titans the tennessee titans man these guys i mean clearly they're just incapable of putting out a good material they're just not capable of being able to put good material on the tv call no taylor swift and the disney channel of family networks on not being able to put out legitimate and good quality entertainment the Cowboys. Are you kidding me? But first off, we I, I I was ready I was ready to say you guys were actually decent. You look good against the Browns, but turns out the Browns just aren't good. Which leads me to my next point: the Jaguars are just putrid, just straight up dumpster dookie juices. But he they're not good. Um, so the Cowboys, I'm like, oh, they're not great. And then you go back, you go look at the uh, the the Saints did to the Panthers. It's like, oh, well, you know, they're not good. So you know, whatever. They scored 40. Brother, my brothers in Christ, Derek Carr hit him with the Michael Jackson. <laughs> he he hit him with the. Uh, he, I mean, it was ridiculous, disrespectful, just absolutely mundane and ubiquitous. I've never seen anything like it. I mean, they put they got hung up a 40 burger on them. I think the final score was like 44 to 19 or something crazy like that. I've never seen anything like it. Brandon Audrey is the Cowboys' best player. That's their kicker, by the way. Call no bears on using a kicker as their MVP. Sorry, Caleb Williams, you're not him. I mean, I. I I don't know. They they just they, they took advantage of the Cowboys in every facet of the game. You know they did. They just took advantage of them. So um, call no big pharma on taking advantage of somebody. But you know what are you gonna do? Uh, the, and then moving on. 
um, you know, I'm going to, I guess I'll pop, I mean, we're going to do the match of the week and looking ahead, um, and I, I'll, I'll run, I, I can't remember his things on top of my head, I know I'm not last, thank you Calder and Scoggins, but, um, I, I will do my song, my song of the week, and it's dedicated to, to, to these standings, you know, these standings, I mean, you've got, you've got bottom feeders at the top, and you've got kings at the bottom, so, uh, here's the song, here's the song for the week. It's the first time for everything. It's the first time for everything. It's the first time for everything. And Skeet and Col Skeet and Evan beating me and Galt is definitely that definitely falls under that umbrella of things that just simply aren't under the norm. Moving on. Next week. Match of the week. Do you know what time it is? Boom. Let me go to this week's scoreboard. 18 Wheeler, can you get off me? Alright, Clay and uh Clay and myself, borderline must win for the Trice clan. Um uh so yeah, I mean I got I got Clay. Um, you know, what are you gonna do? I've outscored Clay two weeks, but knowing my luck, Clay would just his team would probably just absolutely explode this week. So it wouldn't be a surprise. The goal for this week for Team Trash Clan is to be one and two, and for Clay to also be one and two. Um, uh, then we got Scoggins and Galt. Um, uh, Galt uh, per Scoggins' his name has a bye week this week, um, and this match right here might actually be for first place when it's all said and done. Evan and Alex, it is definitely going to be the match of the week. Should be, uh, I, I would project out to see at least 115 plus by both of these teams. Not that they're any good, but I'm just following the trends. Uh, call no Gen Z on following trends. Um, now then we have Calder and Gary. I mean, good grief! I've 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 literally seen paint dry that's more intense. Um, and then you have Skeet and uh, Cheese. So, unfortunately, Skeet's uh, mindless banter will not be able to be combated. His uh, trash talk will not be able to be combated because Cheese will not be responding. But match of the week's definitely uh, Evan and Alex, uh, no doubt. Uh, we'll run over the uh, the standings real quick. Um, I, no, it's, I think it's Skeet, I think it's Skeet, Evan, Alex right now. Uh, yep, yep. Skeet, Evan, Alex. First time for everything. Cheese is coming in hot at one and one with the most points over Clay and Galt. So uh, Cheese, Galt, Clay round out the top uh, top six. Oh, and and Gary. So we've got we've got four one and one teams. So with uh, Gary and Galt, is it Gary and Galt that play? No, they don't play. Gary. And Scoggins. Okay, so yeah, I mean, this can really get shaken up a little bit after next week. If I beat Clay, I should be able to hop in, you know, assuming that I score more points, kind of get me back in the playoff picture a little bit. But yeah, I mean, if if it, at Alex and Evan, one will lose, and if a Cheese beats Cheese beats uh, Skeet, we would have. Uh, the winner of uh, Alex and Evan in first place, and then it is very tight after that. Um, so yeah, it's very interesting. But uh, yeah, I mean, that's kind of all I got. Oh, and then rounding out, you got Dookie Chew's headquarters, Calder, and Scoggins. Um, uh, that's just all by points alone. Um, the points, I can't really see that right now. Yeah, I can't see it. But anyway, that's about all I got, boys. Uh, thank you for your thank you for your candor. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the show. And we'll be back next week. Thursday night, we have an absolute snooze fest. Uh, we do have some Aaron Rodgers, Brees Hall, Garrett Wilson, Stevenson. Um, don't really know if there's anybody else that's going to be playing this fantasy relevant. But yeah, I mean, at least those four guys are going to be felt fantasy relevant. Let's see who can get spoon fed. Uh, Thursday night spoons do not equate to wins, I can assure you. And um, I, I would know. But uh, that's it. Trash Clan Al. Uh, hopefully, next time I see you guys, I'll be one and two. If I'm 0 three, I might not see you again because I might not keep doing this. I'm not going to sit here and provide content for you guys while getting lobotomized, being the surrogate for the league. I'm not going to do it. Trash pack out. Love you guys. No cheese.